Do you guys ever like um, hang out at home, play racing games while inebriated? It's irresponsible. You know what else is irresponsible? Building an X99 gaming rig. But sometimes, it's just fun to be irresponsible. I want to say thanks to our sponsor, Fractal Design. You're looking at my new case, the Define R5. They've kept the uh, clean Scandinavian design, and they've kept the silence, but they've also added a modulant system that allows you to choose between more cooling or more silence. Speaking of cooling, you can fit up to a 420 radiator in the top, a 360 radiator in the front, uh, 240 in the bottom, and also a 140 in the rear. So lots of cooling options. For more information, be sure to click on the link on the screen, and be sure to check out our full video overview. Let's make the case for X99 Gaming, shall we? So... Gaming on Haswell is almost the same speed as gaming on X99, and you save quite a bit of money. Gaming on even the, you know, the AMD stuff for like half the price is price performance the best way to go. However, you know, um, our members, I think, sometimes don't care about price to performance as much as they care about overall performance. And a lot of times they want a game, but they've also got a lot of stuff to do. They got like, you know, they got to write, write do some programming. They've got to... Uh, run their productivity programs, 3D programs, whatever. So an X99 system is the way to go for those people. And I mean, even though you've got work to do, that doesn't mean you don't want a game. So why not have the best? Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, eight core. This is what I'll be using in my upcoming build for my system, but it's also gonna be in this uh, X99 gaming system. So here's my case for the eight core. It's freaking eight cores. That's pretty much the whole case for it. It can overclock pretty well. We were able to push it to about uh, 4.8, which is a bit crazy. But really, for a gaming rig, I mean, we, we used it and we did our tests with the 8-core. For a gaming rig that's doing, like, light productivity, you're probably going to be better off with this, the uh, 5820K. Now, you lose a little bit of cash. However, it's still very overclockable. It's 6-core. And uh, if you overclock this thing to, like, 4.5, it's going to be as good, if not better, than any of the other i7s out there on the market. And it even gives the 8-core a run for its money in gaming. It's just not as fast for productivity, uh, rendering, you know, 7-zip, that kind of stuff. It's just not as fast in that area. It's decently slower. I mean, it's two fewer cores. So the bottom line here with this 6-core uh, part is that you get a lot for your money, you can get a lot of work done, and you can really uh, game like crazy with this uh, CPU. And that's why we've picked a couple of these up. We've got like Three of them floating around in the studio right now. One's going to be in Spanx's uh, rig that he's going to be using for uh, editing and stuff. Pistol's going to be using one in hers. I'm probably going to use the 8-core because I do the most, I guess, rendering and editing. Um, but, you know, the 6-core is just really, really good for the money. For the motherboard, well, let's take a look at the EVGA X99. Um, well, I, we've got the Classified here on the test bench. Now, the Classified is expensive, but you get all the bells and whistles with it. And also, I want to mention that it's been very stable, uh, even when overclocked. Uh, I think that's thanks to the cooling unit we have. We're using the Corsair H110i uh, on the test bench. We were using the Corsair H105 as well, and they both did a very good job of keeping it cool. The only time it really crashed is when we were overclocking and running some tests with air cooling units, and it crashed a lot during that, but that's because it's, you know, freaking air cooling units. So... Other than that, it's been freaking stable, and I don't really have too many complaints with it. It does take longer than most X99 boards that I've played with to boot, so that's a bit weird. Um, and it is a bit expensive, but we I haven't had any trouble with like different memory modules and stuff. That you know, you, it just seems to be uh, a decent board. So we also have the MSI X99 SLI Plus, and we haven't tried that out yet, so I'm not gonna 100% say that this is, uh, you know, like an amazing board. I've read a lot of reports that people have issues with different memory uh, modules, but I also know that they've released some UEFI updates to fix that. There's a lot on this board for not a lot of money. So we do have one in. We're going to be doing a build with it in about a week or so, and uh, that one could be a very interesting way to go just because of the price and the features you get, M.2 and everything else, plenty of ports, uh, you know. All right, next up, the uh, cooling unit. Well, this is the Corsair uh, H110, but we're going to use the H110i. Uh, which has uh, pretty much redesigned everything in better aesthetic than this and it also has slightly better performance and again I said I used the H1105 uh, so if you need a uh, 240 millimeter cooler the H105 did a very good job in our tests and you know something else the Intermax is laying around here where's that thing it's in the floor in front of me uh, the Intermax Lictec um, 240 did an amazing job even better than the H105 with the overclock tech so overclock tech Tech overclock test. So the Lick Tech um, 240 from Intermax did a great job on uh, 
the eight core CPU over there. Graphics cards. I've used the EVGA GTX 980 uh, Superclocked with the ACX cooling unit, the ACX 2.0 that is, quite a bit. And uh, I find it to be a very performance card. I also like the fact that it's really quiet. It's nice and quiet and it stays very cool and it also draws less power uh, when compared to most of the other uh, GTX 980s with custom cooling units on it. So I do like the, uh, the ACX 2.0 quite a bit. So I'm definitely going to recommend it uh, for this build. We're going to go with a couple of these and run them in SLI. And these days SLI doesn't really have too many problems with different games. The only thing I really have a headache with is Skyrim with an EMB. Other than that, it seems to be pretty good with most games. And it gives you, you know, 70 to 80% uh, more performance. So yeah, why not? You can game at 4K with a couple of these things in, in a lot of games. Now we have some options here for the primary storage device. We are going to use an M.2. It plugs straight into the Mucus. motherboard. You rascals. This is going to be the completely budget option, but you're not going to get 128. You're going to get 256. This one's a 770 on the uh, read and um, 580 on the right. Good drive. We've used it. And we've also used this one. Now, uh, this one is a little bit more expensive, but the read and write speed, check, out, check that out. 1080 on the, uh, the read, 800 on the write like that one quite a bit. If you want to go crazy, oh, well, I didn't even bring it up, but yeah, if you guys want to go crazy, you can go for like a Revo drive or one of the uh, crazy 2,000 uh, you know, megabytes per second PCI Express based. You plug it into the motherboard instead of it's not M.2. You guys could get one of those. I think they're a bit expensive and also the, uh, well, the, the, the Revo drive adds a little bit of time to your boot up. There are some other options out there like the one from Mushkin uh, that is a more true solution. So if you guys wanted one of those, I wouldn't object to it. Not not in the least. And, uh, you know, it's nice to know that they're out there. Now, everybody wants some storage, right? Well, that's why you get a NAS. So the first thing, yeah, you, of course you get a NAS. But the first thing I'm going to show you guys, these uh, HGST Death Star, uh, they're NAS drives, but you can put them right into your regular system. Yep, that's right. Just put them right in there. 7200 RPM, of course. Um, and these are 4 terabyte. The price right now is really good. And the HGST from our own tests, uh, along with some of the Western Digital NAS drives, have been... Uh, the best as far as uh, having a low failure rate. So, um, and Wendell gets to deploy these things a lot. And these seem to be a bit better than the Seagates um, and they're slightly better than the Western Digital, but I think the Western Digital is pretty up there as well. So a really good price on these right now. And that's uh, quite nice. Now, if you want a really fast storage drive, here's what I would do. And I just got three of these things for the, for the office, uh, one for everybody. They're gonna be used as a scratch disc for when you're editing. But also, you know, installing a few games, especially games like Skyrim that have like pretty long load times and stuff. Just go ahead and install them on this. This is the Corsair Neutron Series XT uh, SSD. It's a 960 gigabyte SSD using the new Fizen controller. Look at the sequential reads, 560, um, 540 on the right, 100,000 IOPS. That's uh, freaking fancy. So there you can see it here. It's it's picture with the Ninja 2 and that's like a you know a 4k capture device and and it's also the, you know the black magic cameras and stuff they always recommend them for that and the reason being is because they can sustain like a 480 megabytes per second they can just freaking sustain it so I quite like these drives they're nice and fast and again you'll see us using them in the next two or three upcoming builds we're just gonna throw one in there because you know super fast and a lot of storage for the, uh, um, I just noticed we have like a few Corsair products in this, but this one also, uh, we, we just got this in the studio and it is solid. Uh, the HX1000, 1000 watt power supply uh, from Corsair. It's 80 plus platinum certified. And um, one of the things that's interesting about this is it has, uh, you know, uh, digital power control on the inside. There are multiple rails, but if you want to have the performance of a single rail, it can digitally do a single rail um, through Satan magic stuff. All right, for the case, we've got a few different options here. Uh, the Silencio 652S. Now, we've got this case over here in the floor, and the reason I'm recommending it is because we just did a build with um, our capture rig here. And you may notice that like several episodes ago, there was a lot of noise. Now there's not any noise anymore because we put everything in that rig and it is completely whisper quiet. Um, I also really like the Fractal Define R5, but you know, we had to mention this one because Fractal Define R5, they got an advertisement in the beginning. We think they could just be 
in the video too no they can't but that's also i mean i'm using that case uh, it's also a very nice case and extremely uh quiet so both of those are decent i think the, the it's kind of going to come down to aesthetics there are different features in each different a little bit different build quality in each uh, i found the uh the cooler master to be extremely easy to build with and i also uh the other day we just built a system in the define r5 that was really easy to work with as well so you know if, if you want a silent case that's the way to go if you don't want a silent case you want to spend some money i don't know just go get whatever you want if you want to go get case labs or whatever the the home for your pc is mostly up to you it's a lot of it's subjective you just want to do your homework and make sure you get something good and i have used both of those both of those cases and i do vouch for both of them so there you have it we were irresponsible and we put together an x99 gaming rig for people who want to game and also get things done yes sophisticated and fun how about that all right set up with this uh thanks to everyone for subscribing just thank you i know you guys are doing it right now right also new website coming soon enjoy that and uh yeah just always let us know what you guys think we value constructive criticism and we value it more so on our website if you're someone who uh, signs up to our website you're probably someone who is really our core audience so go over there and tell us what you think people in the comments who yell and scream whatever see you guys later